In this video, I am showing you how to 3D print your very first miniature orc fighter. Let's do it. Everybody, I am Danny, the 3D Printing DM. Welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. I've seen a lot of people online who bought their first 3D printer because they saw the work of a guy named Miguel Zavala, aka MZ4250. I actually call Miguel Mr. Monster Manual, aka Triple M, because he has modeled the entire monster manual, and it's one of the things he's most famous for, and a whole bunch of monsters from a whole bunch of different 5e books. The biggest thing is that he's released them all to the community for free, and he's done us a huge service by doing this, and so many people have seen them, they've said, wow, I wanna be able to 3D print any mini I want, let me get a 3D printer so I could print these. Because so many people start off by 3D printing his minis, I decided to start this series off with one of his minis, an orc fighter, which is a really great mini for beginners because it's got these clear and simple organic shapes. And because it's a relatively easy print compared to some other prints of his or some other prints online in general. And that's because sometimes having too much detail can make a print very challenging. So these are great prints that will still look really good on the table and will be a good start for you to start practicing, getting your feet wet, painting and things like that. Uh, so while this video is meant for people who are brand new to 3D printing their miniatures, if you are already a 3D printing pro and decide to stick around, uh, I would love it if you could share some of your expertise and some of your tips with probably me, but not just me, but everybody else in the community who is learning and will be reading the comments to learn what they can do better. I definitely know that the community is going to appreciate it very, very much. So the first thing I do is I find the model I need for my game. And if you're playing D&D and need a specific monster, I go to Google and I type in MZ4250 and the name of the monster. He'll either have it on Shapeways or Thingiverse, and you're gonna make sure you take note of any instructions. If you wanna be safe, this is probably the best thing to do. Um, I'm gonna show you techniques outside of what he shares in the instructions, cause it's what gets me the best results. So if my techniques don't work, give his a shot. Or if you want to be safe, go ahead and print the way he suggests printing from the start. It's a good thing to start stretching your 3D printing muscles and trying different orientations and trying different things. So uh, just take the two again and understand there's no perfect way. You can try both. That being said, for, for more complicated prints like dragons, where the orientation is going to make a really big difference, you probably want to listen to him or whoever's instructions they are in those cases. So now I've downloaded the model, I'm going to import the STL. And you can do this by dragging straight into Cura into the build surface. First thing I always do is I take a look at the mini to make sure that there isn't anything missing. Like, for example, uh, maybe missing parts of the mini because it didn't slice well. Or maybe the model is corrupt for whatever reason. Now, this mini looks good, but if one of your minis is missing some anatomy or things like that, I'd run it through either Microsoft Cloud STL Repair or NetFab to repair it and then bring it back in again. So since this is your first print, I'd leave the settings as is. And here in this case, I'm printing at 0.08 millimeters. But if you want an extremely high quality mini, I'd lower the layer height to 0.05 millimeters. Um, just FYI, lowering the layer height to 0.05 millimeters is gonna make the mini take a lot longer. Now we're gonna review our settings and support. And I'm gonna also double check a couple of things. We're gonna select our mini profile. In this case, the side by profile. I want to make sure that the correct material is selected, that I've selected PLA, that the diameter is set correctly, so the diameter size of the filament roll is 1.75 millimeters, which is the most common size of PLA. And I'm going to check that I have supports enabled if my print needs supports. And in this case, the modeler does indicate that the model can be printed without supports, or they'll use terms like FDM optimized, which means that it can probably print without supports. Just assume that it needs supports if they don't say anything like that. Now. Even if they didn't say that, I definitely know that this mini needs supports, and here's why. One simple way is to manually do a layer slice like this, and if you see something overhanging with no close connector, that's probably gonna fail, okay? Because it's not gonna have anything to, to print on. Now we'll look at the print orientation. With these smaller minis, orientation is really important. For example, with this orc, if you put him on his back, he's gonna have a rougher back surface, and it's not gonna be as clean, no matter what you do but his front is going to be pretty smooth if you lay him on his back. 
right? This isn't gonna have as much detail though because you get more resolution when you lift it and you print it vertically standing up. But it is gonna be safer to print this way and your front is gonna look phenomenal. So that's the trade-off. You'll have a reduced failure rate for a reduced level of detail. Now, if you put them at a 45 degree angle at a compromise, there's gonna be more supports across the back and the bottom, and the layer lines are gonna make the print look a little bit different, which sometimes looks pretty cool, and it'll definitely give you better access to certain angles to remove supports, but my preferred method is still standing because it takes full advantage of the Z-axis resolution. So those, mini those minis that are printed standing up generally look the best on an FDM printer. And the support marks are generally on places like chins and under the arms and capes. And on the table, you can barely see those things because you're not looking at the mini like this from, from underneath. So in this case, I'm gonna go with my favorite and I'm going to print this orc standing up. Now, if your print fails for one reason or another, try reorienting it. You might get better results even if your settings still need some work. Now, you notice he also has a weapon, uh, this like ax, and Miguel has it floating a bit at an angle. That's because it isn't perfectly flat, so you can't print it, you know, straight like this on the build plate. So printing this is gonna have support material regardless, and you can probably expect it's so thin, it's probably gonna be kind of flimsy. I'm just gonna leave it this way that he's got oriented and generate supports for it just to be simple, not overcomplicate anymore. And it's time to slice the file and make it into a G-code file. In some cases, it's just gonna say save to disk or save to file, which is what it is here. And then you're gonna save it onto your SD card. Now you pop that SD card into your printer and then just let the printer do its magic. Now that the print is finished, I kind of just slide the uh, print removal tool underneath and I just kind of slide it all around and then just pop it off. And now I'm gonna start removing supports and I'm gonna use my favorite twist and apple core technique, then just snip off the excess support artifact and then I file and sand down some of the odds and ends here and there. If you want a full breakdown of some of the techniques that I use for support removal and cleanup, check out the support removal video at the top right corner as well. If you're new and printing your first minis, there's a chance your first minis might not be perfect. The good news is that there are still things that you can do to help finish your prints and make them a little bit better even after this step. So next I'm gonna prime both of these. And even if you have some layer lines, the primer is gonna help cover up some of those and then the paint's gonna continue to help cover up some of those layer lines. So it's not as obvious. And I am priming this orc with a simple flat gray using Rust-Oleum 2X, it's a primer. And I'm using this gray because it's just the right balance of thickness without obscuring too much detail. And now the really fun part, the paint. To start, we're gonna lay down our base colors. For the boots and the gloves and the base, I paint them a dark brown, burnt umber. Then I'm gonna go to the skin and I start with a marsh green and then I add some white to lighten it a little bit and then I just lay it down. And you're gonna need several coats of each of these base coats and I recommend adding a little bit of water so that they're not too thick. And it's better to have several thin layers of paint than fewer thick layers for the most part, even with these minis, okay? It's gonna be tempting to do thick layers on these minis because you wanna cover the, the lines and you can do that. If you want a smoother, cleaner paint job, you're gonna need to do thin layers on thin layers. I just thin my paint with a few drops of water. So then I'm gonna use a middle shade of purple, Velvet Crush, to paint the pants. And I'm doing a middle shade because I want the cape to be a darker shade and I want there to be a little bit of contrast. And so I paint the cape a darker shade of purple, like I said, it's gonna be a royal violet. And I'm also gonna paint the shoulder pads a darker silver. I'm using gunmetal gray. After I did this, I decided I wanted to even out the skin a little bit. So I add a bit of a darker shade so that the skin isn't so bright as well. And now we've completed our base, our base paints. And now I'm gonna emphasize the face and some of the body parts as well using a wash, specifically a black wash. Now, if you're gonna do this, just a fair warning, if you're gonna do this with a mini that's printed above a 0.08 millimeter layer height, we can usually see some layer lines. It's gonna fill in the cracks and it's gonna accentuate the layer gaps, those layer lines that you have unless you coated it with like polyurethane or something to make it smooth. And uh, normally I would do something like a green wash in this case, but I'm deciding to use the back wash because I actually want the color a little bit darker for the skin. 
I'm okay just making it that way. And I'm focusing my wash in the areas where there are crevices so that it pools and it looks like the natural shadows like in his elbow and his eyes and his face. And uh, there are more complicated techniques here like edge highlighting and things like that. But at this point, um, this wash is just gonna darken it and I'm trying to keep this simple for, for people who are new. I also coat the shoulder pads in Nuln Oil because it's gonna make the metal look a little dirtier, which is what I want. And I'm also gonna do this with the axe. And then I use an Agrax Earth Shade, which is the brownish wash I usually use for things like leather. And I'm gonna use it on the boots and the gloves, as well as the belt. I'm also using uh, an Army Painter Quick Shade. I got it in this kit when I first started painting. And I'm doing this to add some variety to the shading of the cape and the pants, and I'm letting it pool in some places. So, be, and I'm doing that because this piece has simpler geometry, a lot more flat surfaces. So it's easier to paint evenly, but that can leave your mini without depth. And it doesn't have as many complex folds for this to kind of sit in and pool in. So I kind of have to create that depth on my own. And I'm doing this, letting it pool in certain areas to add a little bit more variety and texture to these minis into this flat surfaces, kind of like you would see like on an N64 model. One other thing that I do to kind of touch this up is I do an antique white of the teeth, and then I add a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade to the bottom parts if I can to kind of make it look a little bit dirtier, not just so plain, boop, popping out. So to finish, I'm going to glue him onto an old 3D printed base I have. It's literally just a one inch circle that got elevated. <laughs> I let it dry and here is our finished orc mini. Uh, you can glue the ax into his hands as well at this point if you want to. And that's it everyone, we have a simple paint job that I think will look pretty good on the table. And if you're new, all you need to do really is focus on trying to be as steady as possible. And uh, this is super quick and I think that this is totally doable by somebody even if this is your first mini. If you have any tips or tricks that you'd like to share with other folks, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to subscribe and join us more often. We'd love to have you here. Thank you again for joining me today. Happy printing and happy gaming.